Okay, are you ready for the EG OSCE? Let's start with the story first. So this is a 60 year old man who was found submerged in a lake and resuscitated. I guess it took 5 to 10 minutes before he was resuscitated and found by somebody. Each and uh, Now he's in the intensive care unit and each and every time the intensivist tapers down the propofol, this man starts twitching in his face and his arms. EEG is requested to rule out non-convulsive status epilepticus. What I want you to do is pick a piece of paper and a pen, review the EEG and you can pause the video and take your time, write your impression and try to specifically answer whether you believe this EEG is representative of status epilepticus. At later during this recording I will review this EEG and give you my impression. So let's get started here. Look at all the channels, try to write your impression, try to describe whatever you see and start writing on the paper. So let's start here. This is using a low, freq low frequency filter of 1 Hz and a high frequency filter of 70 Hz. The notch filter is off at this time. Sensitivity is set at 7 microvolts per millimeter and the time base is 30 millimeters per second. If you believe that this is status epilepticus, then write that in your impression. If you have an alternative explanation, that impression is also welcome. If there is something that you believe is ictal, describe that. If there is something of interest in the interictal period, write down as much explanation as you can. So now I will cut down the gain somewhat. So you can, so let's cut down the gain here. We are looking at a sensitivity of 15 microvolts per millimeter here. We've gone up to 10 microvolts per millimeter and this is 7 microvolts per millimeter. So I'll show you another maybe 10-20 seconds and then we'll go to the beginning of the record and I'll review the EG with you. So for the 30 minutes of recording the EG just continued this way. Okay and that's it. So let me just go to the beginning of the record. So we are just moving backwards. Okay, are you ready? So what do we see here? Let's see. So this is this, these are the odd numbers, so recording from the left side of the brain, recording from the right side of the brain, the even numbers record from the right side of the brain, as you recall, these two channels, the last two channels are recording from the midline. Okay, let's move on. So what you see here, you see these spikes, periods of spikes, with maximal amplitudes here at CZ. Here these are more or less C4 and you do see some spikes at C3 area here and in between these bursts of spikes you see almost a flattening of the EG. So you're looking at an amplitude at a sensitivity of 7 microvolts per millimeter and you don't even see 5 or even 2 uh, microvolts of activity here. So what you see here at the beginning of the record is a burst and suppression. So this is a burst suppression pattern. As we are recording the EEG, the propofol is being tapered down. So you do see the burst suppression. What happens when you taper off the propofol? EEG should become more continuous and the periods of suppression should l lessen in duration. And here the EEG is a little more continuous. So it probably the propofol has been taken off. The EEG is more continuous. 
these spikes are getting a little more complex here you see high amplitude spikes at CZ electrode here and then what happens here so at these spikes the burst almost become continuous you do see sort of an evolution in the frequencies of these discharges and this becomes more and more continuous so you're looking at almost a seven second period of these are these can be classified as poly spikes these, because there are multiple spikes in these waveforms poly spikes and then what happens here so this goes and the amplitude starts going up and the discharges become continuous and then this continues to evolve until this point and you see more or less disappearance of these spike and waves so by definition this is an electrographic seizure so what is the definition of an electrographic seizure you need to have a clear beginning which you do have you see to you need to see a clear end and you do see a clear end you want to see evolution in frequencies and amplitude which you can recognize here now some people may question whether this is just myoclonus in a patient who suffered anoxia it's possible that it is myoclonus and myoclonus can be epileptic myoclonus and to determine whether this is coming from the brain or if this is just activity from the muscle if this is just artifact from the muscles people who are experienced will know that this is not but uh, for a novice one important place to look at is look at the CZ electrodes if you see activity on the CZ electrode similar to activity that you see at C3, C4 or other parts of the EEG then this is more likely an epileptiform discharge or an epileptic phenomena it's very difficult put your fingers on the center at the location where you put CZ and try to contract the muscles so muscle artifacts are least seen on CZ those are more likely to be seen in the temporal head regions so here you don't see that and then this is a so this is an electrographic seizure and it stops and then if this person goes into another electrographic seizure which stops and yet another electrographic seizure during these times this patient was twitching so the question now writing our impression whether this is status epilepticus yes the EEG shows multiple electrographic seizures which are very clear with a clear beginning with a clear end with evolution in frequency and amplitude so electrographically this is status epilepticus what about non-convulsive I would not call it a non-convulsive status epilepticus if they are witnessing twitching of the muscles in the arms and legs then this is both a clinical and electrographic status epilepticus so the impression here so if you've written the impression that these this EEG is consistent with status epilepticus you've gotten the OSCE correct in terms of treatment of status epilepticus well that depends on the etiology that also depends on a number of factor and I'm not going to go into management discussion on this EEG Thank you for joining me and I'll see you at the next tutorial.